Hello, I'm doing a review for this book, An Amazing Journey into the Psychotic Mind by Jerry Mozinski and Sherry Sweeney. I hope that's pronounced okay and I apologise now if they're not. Um, this book is an interesting and alternative look at schizophrenia and I have to be honest, it has blown my mind. The book goes through the history of schizophrenia treatments it is clear that psychotic episodes are nothing new. Throughout the ages, people have suffered from madness, often described as possession. In the past, madness has been driven out by shamans or religious people who saw the madness as an invasion of the human vessel by dark spirits. Leading on from the Enlightenment, medical science has increasingly taken over the role of dealing with madness, to the point that in the West today, pharmaceutical companies and educational authorities work in lockstep to decide what is the most appropriate diagnosis and treatment for patients. And they make sure that practitioners have to be licensed and work within these agreements. It has been a bumpy road for these forces to gain their stronghold of control over mental illness, but are they achieving much more than repressing symptoms? This book describes some of the treatments used over the last couple of centuries to treat people with schizophrenia, and many of the treatments are genuinely inhumane and barbaric. Examples range from boring holes into people's skulls, to induced sickness treatments and shock treatments, and back to poking around inside people's skulls in the form of lobotomy. Doctors have made some horrific experiments on their human patients over the years. It's disturbing what can be deemed acceptable in the name of science. Today, the main treatments of schizophrenia are antipsychotic drugs. Whilst these drugs subdue the symptoms of schizophrenia, they are not a cure and the side effects are severe. For many sufferers, there certainly hasn't been a solution found for their problem. The main benefit of all these medical treatments was to subdue the patient. Marzinski explains that schizophrenic patients are often volatile and dangerous as they suffer the throes of psychosis. These treatments did not cure patients, but they did subdue them for a while, which made them easier to manage. One of the primary symptoms of schizophrenia is hearing voices. According to Mozinski, when patients try to ignore their voices, they get louder. And whilst the powerful drugs can help to dull the voices, when the brain readjusts to take, to take account of them, the voices usually return. Schizophrenics are told that the voices they hear are hallucinations, they are not real and they should ignore them. Despite being discouraged by his work superiors, Mozinski took a different approach to treating his patients and asked, asked them more about their voices. What were they saying? After years of listening to many patients tell him about the nature of their voices, Mozinski has concluded that the voices are not random hallucinations, they follow patterns and they do not originate within the person hearing them. Mazinski's experiences are fascinating, frightening and convincing. We tend to accept that our internal voices come from us, but can some be put there? Everyone has had thoughts which are outrageous or horrifying and which we do not want or would never act upon but where do they come from? Do those thoughts really originate within us? This book is written by Mozinski and Sweeney, but it also has a lot of contributions from other people who have worked in and explored this area. Between them, they share strikingly similar experiences of the voices heard by schizophrenics, experiences that are too similar to be written off as coincidence. As Mozinski questions, if the voices heard by schizophrenics are hallucinations that only exist in their minds, then they wouldn't share the same characteristics and patterns in patients in different parts of the world 
or living in different ages. Many were grateful that someone was taking the time and effort to listen to their side of things instead of writing them off as insane and telling them to take their medications. As the number of patients I questioned mounted, I noticed they were all experiencing the same phenomenon. One of my most significant findings was that the voices were not random as other hallucinations are. They ran consistent, predictable, negative patterns. I was certain that whatever the voices were, they were not hallucinations, but the prime movers behind not only the patient's behaviour, but paranoid schizophrenia itself. It was very disturbing reading the experiences of people suffering from these voices. It sounds like hell. To be honest, the idea of having those experiences is terrifying. When I read the stories of the divine beings, I was tingling. I was tingling because I know deep down that they're true. Many schizophrenics that Mozinski and Sweeney have helped with their methods of evicting the voices have recovered, something which medical science says doesn't happen. If sufferers learn to understand that the voices do not come from within themselves and are an outside entity that benefits from their feelings of pain, misery and hatred, patients can then feel some sense of control. They are not crazy they are being attacked and that knowledge and with that knowledge they can then fight back. The book concludes by putting forward the appeal to break the grip that pharmaceutical companies and educational authorities have on the treatment paths for sufferers and to find more effective ways to treat people with schizophrenia. Modern science can be a powerful tool in aiding us with understanding the material world but it is quite blind to the fact that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. I think this is a really powerful statement and something which people need to be reminded of. Even though shamans have been casting demonic spirits out of humans for tens of thousands of years, when science came into existence around 300 years ago, the human race was swayed into believing a spiritual world that cannot be perceived or measured does not exist. I have to wonder if there is a grander picture developing where the negative entities are influencing ordinary people to unwittingly forgo all that humanity knew about spirituality prior to the advent of science. Are we saying we have scientifically proven that evil spirits are the cause of paranoid schizophrenia? No. What we are saying is twofold. One, it is the voices that drive and maintain paranoid schizophrenia. And two, when the voices are gotten rid of by any means, the patient returns to normal functioning and psychotic symptomology, symptomology vanishes. vanishes. The fact is that neither the academic nor the medical establishments have listened, nor have they done any research into the voices before arbitrarily proclaiming them to be hallucinations. Those able to temporarily suspend their belief system and take the time to talk to these patients about what their voices are telling them will see the many patterns and correlations we've brought to light. This includes the question of why the contents of these so-called auditory hallucinations isn't random, as is the case in all other hallucinations. What force holds them to a consistent and unswervingly negative trajectory? What accounts for the fact that the voices are giving patients the same negative and self-destructive messages across time and space? The current pharmacological treatments are, are powerful drugs with many awful side effects and they can only dull the effects of the condition. If there is another less harmful treatment that can actually cure patients, surely we owe it to the people suffering and their families to take these methods more seriously. This book, An Amazing Journey into the Psychotic Mind, brings together referenced information and facts and figures as well as the wisdom that has been gathered from experience and personal inquiry. It is scattered with personal quotes which draw on personal experience both working with schizophrenics and experiencing the voices firsthand. This 
This book was written in an informal style, which makes it accessible to non-medical people. It was very passionately written, sometimes a little heated. Although I felt convinced by the arguments, other people might need them to be a little more measured to be able to open their minds to the alternative arguments being presented. It was well researched, as well as the personal experience of the contributors, there was a lot of citations. It would have been nice to have a list of the referenced books for further reading, as many of them sounded interesting. I particularly recommend this book for people suffering from mental health problems and for people supporting those suffering. I also recommend it for people trying to understand more about what life is about, as well as people exploring their faith and belief system. I have found this book both a terrifying and a fascinating read. It certainly held my attention all the way through. This book was so interesting, I flew through it. It was very thought provoking and has given me a lot to think about. At times the content was disturbing, but it felt essential to know. Both Mazinski and Sweeney seem to be very impressive people with a dedication to helping people conquer this affliction. I also recommend looking up some of the interviews that Mazinski has done to promote the book because there's a lot of good information there too. Okay, thank you for listening.